Hi everyone, this is Kathy Grosskirk with Bookkeeping Clean and Simple, and this is the sixth video in my current series on the books review feature in QuickBooks Online Accountant. And today we're going to be talking about this area down here, this outstanding transactions area. I'm going to scroll up a little bit so that way we can see a little bit of the end here. Now I did talk about these additional items actually from the transaction review tab. And it's basically a similar concept, so I'm not going to talk about it here again. I actually did a separate video on that. In fact, the link to that video as well as all the other videos in the series is in the description. So be sure to go back and watch those videos. We are my Kathy bookkeeping test file, which we'll use throughout this series. Now, before we actually get started, if you would, I would appreciate it if you would like my channel, subscribe to it, share it with others. I'm still trying to build up my viewership and get those algorithms going. I share videos every week on QuickBooks related topics geared mostly toward accountant users, but also for folks who just like my materials. So any of you are welcome to be a part of my channel. I would love to have you be a part of my channel. With that said, let's go ahead and get started on this area here on outstanding transactions. Now, basically this area is where we're looking at items that may be older than say 90 days. And I primarily see this being used when you have tax returns done for prior years and you don't want to go back and mess anything up in those prior years. So this is primarily where you would use this. So if you're worried about whether or not you're going to need to amend any returns or anything like that, then you probably would not use this tool, at least not at the very beginning until you've done some other stuff. Now it would just take me too long to go into that here. I just want to focus on this area right here. So what we're going to do with this area right here is to look at what you can do in this area. Now, as you can see these transactions and I tried filtering on this er earlier and you really can't. So if you wanted to see the oldest transactions, you basically have to scroll back to the very beginning here. And there's transactions going back to 12, 6, 2021. And an example of this would be say, if you, wanted to make sure you kept the integrity of the tax information from a certain point in time prior and you don't want to mess those up so basically we could do that with these three transactions and i'm not actually going to do anything with these transactions but i'm going to go through the process up until the point so that you can see you can have the same types of responses that we had in the other area that we talked about last week with the reconciliation stuff so you can either ask the client, which that will open up a client request where you can send the client a question on that you need some more info about these transactions and it will include those listed here. And again, I'm not really sure if this is related or linked to the area in the work tab. I, I would imagine it might be, I'm not sure. Of course, you wanna make sure that that notify client button is turned on so they will get that email and can respond to that. Or you can actually create a journal entry. Now I would advise you before you going in and making these journal entries, you have to know whether or not it's money coming in or money going out. So you want to make sure that you kind of group like items together, like money going out and money going in. And then that's why I kept this category called prior years adjustments, because that's work, that's the offset that you're going to use to create this general journal entry. So you click on that and it's going to open up the general journal entry page. And then you can set that journal number with whatever you want. And of course, yes, you're going to check here to make that an adjusting entry. And then you're going to put your debits here and your credits here. And you want to make sure all that lines up. The only thing about that is it doesn't actually fill in the form for you. So you have to do some kind of configuring to figure out which categories you're going to want to save those in when you go into the prior year returns. So basically what you're doing is you're trying to remove them from the register and, and park them in that prior year's adjustment. So that way that you don't see them in here anymore. 
Okay, and that's the only drawback that I see to using this tool. It would be nice if they had that capability. So give into it your feedback on that. So if you select things in bulk, it should, I would think, pull in that information into the general journal form and be able to allow you to set up that journal entry without you having to sit there and think about it ahead of time. But anyway, that's basically all I have for y'all today. I hope this helps you. Y'all take care. Have a wonderful week and we will see you soon.